So today I'm going to be doing a video about the Invisiframe. I have been running Invisiframe for about three years now, three years. So I know what this thing can do. I know where its shortcomings are. I know what its strengths are. I know like if it's even worth it to even buy it. Now, just to just cut to the chase. Yes, I believe that this thing is worth it to buy it every single time. I will not ever buy a new bike and not put this on. If for some reason I were to ever buy an aluminum bike, maybe I wouldn't buy it, but I don't know if, unless something like crazy happens, I'm never not gonna ride a carbon bike. I mean, I just love the feel of a carbon bike. Oh, that's another subject. If I am spending and putting a good chunk of money in, ugh, excuse me, into my mountain bikes, I want to protect it. I wanna be sure that I'm protecting that investment. I don't make a whole lot of money at all by any means. I do not even get come close to making a lot of money at all. One of the ways I'm able to afford the sport and you know, kind of, you know, be ride bikes like I do is because I take care of my investment. I always end up usually selling, sell my bikes around one to two, maybe two and a half years later. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want my bike to lose a lot of value. Like I'm not one of those guys who just, oh, I'm gonna buy a new bike this year, and a new bike that year, not at any means at all. It's just kind of like it started slowly from getting like an entry bike to a more expensive bike, to a more expensive bike, and now you kind of see the bike that I have now. So I was able to kind of always turn my bikes around to put a big chunk of the money into a new bike. So therefore, I need to make sure that my bike is 100% protected all the time. Hence why I use an Invisiframe. And I think you guys should be using it too. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to install it, how easy it is, and I'm gonna tell you about where you guys can get it. First off, the way that you can get it is you go on invisiframe.com or something like that, I'll put it in the description. You can go there, there are a UK company, I think, or some other company outside of the United States. Therefore, it's out of the country, but you can still get these things like super quick, like in one to two days, they will ship them to you and you will get them very fast, like every single time. And they're only like 120 bucks. And if you put an Invisiframe on your bike, I cannot tell you how many times I would have went, wow, if I didn't have the Invisiframe on, just that little thing would have really messed up my bike or would have messed it up that much more, saving me hundreds of dollars in depreciation of my mountain bike or my past mountain bike. So therefore, like I was able to like turn my bikes around for more money. And whenever I sell a bike to another customer that's mine, or not customer, whenever I sell another bike to a customer, whenever I sell another bike to somebody or sell one of my bikes to someone, when they see that I have the Invisiframe on, it just creates that confidence within them that I've taken care of my bike, I've loved my bike, and it gives them more confidence when buying my bike. So, okay, I've rambled on a ton. Um, I've given you a couple of reasons why you should go with the Invisiframe. Let me show you now how easy this thing is to install. Firstly, what you're going to need to install the Invisiframe is bug and tar remover. This stuff works great for me, sprayed all over the bike, gets it super clean. So when I go to stick the Invisiframe on, there's nothing underneath the frame, like any lint or anything, well not lint, but any you know type of grime or anything like that. This stuff is super awesome. Other thing you're going to need is some type of baby shampoo, preferably like Johnson & Johnson's or something like that. This is Aveeno, but it, I, it works fine for me. So I haven't had any problems with it. Other thing you're going to need is a spray bottle. This isn't really a spray bottle, but it's all I had for today and it works just fine. So what I do, I stick some of the baby soap to about there, like back at the bottom. Then I put water inside all the way to the top, shake it up like that, and then you're ready to go. That's it. Lastly, the thing you're going to need is a lint-free cloth to make sure that when you wipe your bike off and clean it thoroughly, that there is no lint or anything to that effect so that you can install the Invisiframe all kosher-like. Essentially what you're gonna get is a tube like so. You're gonna take the tape off and take that, pop that off. What's gonna come out is your squeegee, which is, you're gonna use this to shove all that water out, which you will see in a second. Your instructions, which is very important, very important. Or I shouldn't say instructions, more like a diagram on there. So that's it. What you're gonna have here is, this is the Invisiframe itself. 
it comes in a film, I guess you can say like this. All right, so you're going to take this guy right here. So I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, I think you can see it pretty well. So essentially this is an exact replica of this. So you're gonna be able to go, hey, look, this is my down tube. So let me find that shape in this thing. It's kind of hard to see. You kind of got to shine it up against the light, get an extra light or something like that to like fill around. You gotta go like that to kind of look and kind of see the shapes. You're not gonna be able to see it in the camera, but essentially this is an exact replica of your exact bike's shape. It's 100% awesome. All you gotta do is follow this. Let's just say you don't know what a down tube is. So, okay, cool. I don't know what a down tube is. What's a down tube? How do I find the down tube? Because I don't even know what a down tube is because if I can find it on here, but where is it on my bike? I have no idea. Super easy. They made it super simple for you guys to figure out. Turn the page. Ah, sorry, you, you, you just like, you, you literally flip it over, don't turn the page. Let's see, what's the down tube? Oh. This says down tube lower right add-on. This says shock mount right side. So it literally corresponds to itself. Super duper cool, super awesome, super easy for momos like me. So like this is a really awkward position and I apologize. I wish I had another camera so I can plan this out and do it better, but I can't. So that's just the way it is. So let's just keep moving forward. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is the top tube. So let's find the top tube. So here's the top tube. Let's get our other paper, top tube head end and then that's the rear of it so i'm gonna find this shape on here boom debug is right here like i said you guys aren't gonna be able to see this on camera but you're gonna take your spray bottle and what i like to do so because what's gonna happen is if you try to just pull this like a sticker the adhesive may be a little bit too strong and you might stretch the actual adhesive so what you're gonna want to do is kind of just maybe peel a little bit of it and kind of just go like this a little bit around it and then start peeling slowly and if it starts giving you some trouble then you're going to spray some more and kind of just continue to pull until it starts to come like right here it's kind of getting a little rough so i'm going to just keep going like that a little bit kind of just working it see i'm still feeling like i'm putting a little bit too much tension so i'm trying to just work it inside so it comes off easier and this serves to also there we go just comes right off so what I'm gonna do at this point, is I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna spray it all on the bottom of it. I did spray a ton. You don't need to spray this much. Um, I tend to, as I get better at it, I spray a little bit less because I don't need all that soap on it so that I can reposition it and move it to exactly where I want it. Once I get a little bit, once I got a little bit better at it, I was able to kind of just do it very lightly and just get it to where I wanted once I got the feel for it. You know what I'm saying? So. Again, you guys would probably want to have some clean hands while doing this. Sorry, the camera's out of focus and I'm acting like, oh, I gotta get it focus. All right, but anyway, so here it is like this. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna find the front end and we're gonna put it on top like so. I wanna line it up just right. And then because all that soap's on here, it stops it from adhesing. The soap and the water stops the adhesive from adhesing onto the frame. So it allows you, if like, if you, if I just needed to go like this right now, take it all off, I can. Then I can go right back because of that soap that's in there. So this really helps you to get this thing where you need it. I have rarely ever had to cut anything to make it fit right. Everything usually, sometimes you think like, oh, I think I'm gonna have to cut this to make it fit. But honestly, nine times out of 10, it'll fit when you just work it. You just got to sculpt like putty and just kind of just get it there. Um, I think I've only cut a few pieces and it's just because I lost patience. And the notes are getting pretty good on some of the uh, instructions. So I'll actually make notes, I notice now, saying that, oh, you might need to cut this or you might need to cut this piece depending on how um, your bike is cut or fitted or whatever. So by this time, I'm really thirsty. I'm gonna get a drink. Mm. I'm noticing over here is a ton of bubbles. So I may have to peel it off and reapply here because it is pretty bad. So one of the hacks that I use is a, I use a towel. Sometimes we get, like I was noticing, I was really getting in the habit of really just pushing with my hands as you saw, but really the best hack that you do is to push it with a towel. Cause as you work those bubbles out, you'll push that moisture to the end and you this, as you push it to the end, the towel can pick up the moisture, which will 
once you pick up more of that moisture, the easier it's going to finally adhese. And this one seems to be fitting on really nice. See, some of these things will take a long time. You're like, oh my gosh, it took forever. And then you'll just like get one and you'll put a piece on. You'll think it'll be hard. It just goes on like nothing, like really well. So this one like went on super easy. All right, so like I finished like the front tube, uh, the head tube, like both sides a lot quicker than I even did this top tube, which was really weird because I usually never have problems on the top tube. It's just fit really weird, but I really do notice that there's some great coverage on this one. I really like this 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 one. I think I don't know if uh, if the frame is improving on some things, but I mean I really feel like they're really like covering more like area than maybe like some of the previous ones I had. I don't know. This bike just seems to really like fit really well. So right now I got the head tube, top tube, bottom tube, rear stay. Okay, I don't got anything on the inside yet, but I have all on the outside. So yeah, that's where I'm at at the current moment. So let's uh, keep going. And another pro tip for installing these, Whenever I take one of these pieces and I finish them, I cross it out. That's one of the things I totally forgot to do. And I was like looking at the, the, sheet, the diagram right now with everything and or this diagram against the actual Invisiframe sticker stuff. And I was like, oh, no wonder I'm having such a hard time trying to figure out what I did and what I didn't do uh, because I haven't been crossing out. So I'm going to start crossing these out on the ones that I've already finished. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So down to done, down to that on left, down to that on right. Right seat stay, left seat stay, left chain stay, top tube. So now I got a better idea of what I have left and what I have done. You get a bunch of extra little circle pieces here to kind of fill in gaps where you may want some protection where there is actually like no intent, like no intended piece. So you got like circles here that you could actually peel off. You got some more circles there. And you got some, you got like a square rectangle ones right there. All right guys, so now for some really important stuff in regards to the visit frame. So a lot of you guys were probably wondering, will this stop my frame from cracking? More than likely, 100% no. I have, my frame has cracked with the Invisiframe on it and I've had to get a crash replacement or whatever. So this is not going to literally stop your frame from cracking. Like I've cracked a down tube and I have cracked a rear chain stay with the Invisiframe on it. However, is it still worth it to me? Yes, and this is why. Cosmetically, I'm not just trying to protect my frame from cracking. I want to protect it from scratches and everything like that because all that's going to like depreciate the value the more um, it gets scratched. People are going to get the feeling if you're ever going to go resell your bike and get, you know, that you know you didn't take care of your bike or that you rode it too hard, you know, or, or maybe you hit it or scratched it just enough. Maybe there's something wrong with the integrity of the carbon fiber. People are crazy cuckoo about carbon fiber. So just having carbon fiber in general, you just want to protect it as much as you can. But like I said, Maybe it is slightly enough, just a little bit more protection to stop it from cracking in some circumstances. Like I said, I got a test lab here. I can't test that, but that is my feeling behind it. I have seen some pretty hard strikes on my um, chain, rear chain stay before. And I was like, wow, I really think that this could have potentially have cracked if I didn't have you know, this coating on here because when it hit, when the rock or whatever hit, it scrunched it up really bad, you know? And I was thinking, man, if if it scrunched up the plastic that much that I put on, how much more of an impact would have been on my actual carbon in my chainstay? So I'm gonna say no, it won't protect it, but who knows, maybe it has.